third grade students and welcome to today's video lesson. Today we are going to learn all about this part of the violin, which is called the bow. And we're going to learn about the parts of the bow and we're even going to go over the way you hold the bow. So in order to participate in today's lesson, you're going to need a nice long pencil, not a short stubby pencil but a nice long full-size pencil. So if you don't have one close by, go ahead and hit pause right now. And then once you find yourself a pencil, hit play and get started back up with the lesson. Okay, let's begin. There are two main ways to make a sound on the violin. And the first way is simply by plucking the strings like this. And the musical term for plucking is pizzicato. Pizzicato is an Italian term and it means to pluck. It's actually a pretty fun word to say too, so let's try saying it together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Pizzicato. Good work. Now the other main way that you make a sound on the violin, of course, is with the bow. Doesn't the violin sound different when you bow it compared to when you pluck it? Anyways, we also have a musical term for bowing, and it is arco, to bow, another Italian word. Let's say it together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Arco. Nice work. So, the two main ways to make a sound on the violin are pizzicato, to pluck, and arco, to bow. And since today's lesson is all about the bow, we're going to be working on arco technique. And let's begin by going over the different parts of the bow and just some facts about what the different parts of the bow do. Now this main part of the bow, the long wooden part, it's simply called the stick. S-T-I-C-K. Stick. It's probably the easiest part of the bow to remember because doesn't it literally look like a stick, right? Anyways, let's say stick together on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Stick. Now, opposite of the stick, we have, see these, this off-white part of the bow here? Well, these are actually called bow hairs, and they're made from hair. So, um, let's try saying bow hair on the count of three. One, two, three. Bow hair. Good. So, what do we call this side? One, two, three. Three, stick. And this side, one, two, three. Bow hair, nice. Now, you pull the bow hairs across the violin strings in order to make a sound. And um, an interesting fact about the bow hair is that musicians never touch their bow hairs with their hands because if you touch your bow hair with your hand, it can ruin the way your bow sounds with the violin. And of course, musicians wouldn't want to do that. Right? Anyways, let's go on to the next part. Do you see this mm, square black part of the bow here? This is called the frog. F-R-O-G, spelled just like the animal, frog. Can you say frog with me? One, two, three, frog. Now, the frog is probably the heaviest part of the bow. This is the most sturdy part of the bow. So when you see violinists play, they're always holding the bow down here by the frog because the frog is so heavy and sturdy. Now, opposite of the frog, this end of the bow is quite light and delicate, actually. We call this side of the bow the tip, T-I-P. Can you say it with me? Tip, one, two, three, tip. Good work. And like I said, this part of the bow is a bit more delicate, which is why you don't see violinists holding that part of the bow. They're always holding down here by the frog. Let's go back to the beginning and let's go over all the different parts just to review. So, here, this part is called one, two, three, stick. Opposite of the stick, we have this part, one, two, three, bow hair. This nice, heavy, sturdy part of the bow here, this is called the one, two, three, frog. And then, this is the delicate end here. Let's say it on the count of three. One, two, three, tip. 
Did you get all four parts? There are two more parts to go. Now, wrapped down here at the bottom of the stick, this part, it's called the grip. G-R-I-P, grip. And the way I remember it is that it rhymes with this part of the bow. You remember what it's called? The tip. So we have the tip and the grip, and they rhyme. Now, the purpose of the grip is literally to help violinists get a good grip onto their bow. The stick is smooth and slick and slippery, um, and it's hard to hold the bow if you just were trying to hold on onto the stick because your fingers would slide. The grip kind of keeps your fingers in place so you're not slipping and sliding up and down the bow. Again, let's say this part on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Grip. Very good. From the beginning, this first part that we learned, the long wooden part. One, two, three. Stick. Across from the stick, that part that you never touch, what is it called? One, two, three. Bow hair. Did you get it? How about to go a little out of order? What do we call this top part here? One, two, three. Tip. Did you get it? Down here, this heavy part of the bow. One, two, three. Frog. And then this part that's wrapped around the stick. Let's say it on the count of three. One, two, three. Grip. Did you get all the parts so far? There's only one more part to go now. Do you see the silver part here next to the frog? This here, it's a screw that you can turn back and forth, and the part is actually called the adjusting screw. Can you say that with me? Count of three. One, two, three. Adjusting screw. And the adjusting screw adjusts the tightness of the bow hair. When you put your bow back into the case and you're finished playing it for the day, you want your bow hairs to be nice and loose so that your bow stick can relax. Now, you don't want to play with a loose bow though because it won't sound very good. In order for the bow hairs to grip onto your violin strings, they need to have a bit of tightness to them. So you tighten the bow when it's time to play and you loosen the bow hair when it's time to put it away. That's the general rule. Anyways, that's a lot of information, students. Do you think you can remember what all those parts of the bow are called? Even if I go a little bit out of order? Hmm, let's try it. I'm gonna mix things up a little, go out of order here. Okay, do you remember what this part of the bow is called? Count of three. One, two, three. Grip. Did you get it? Do you remember what this part of the bow is called? The sturdy, heavy part. One, two, three. Frog. Did you get that part too? Now, what do we call this part of the bow that we're never going to be touching? One, two, three. Bow hair. How did it go? Did you get that one? Up here? What do we call this? The top of the bow here. One, two, three. Tip. Did you get it? Hmm. How about this part here? This part that you turn so that you can tighten and loosen your bow hairs. One, two, three adjusting the screw. Did you get that one? Okay, there's one more part to go. The long wooden part. What do you call it? One, two, three. Stick. How did you do? Did you get all of them right? Good work. Anyway, now let's talk about the proper way to hold the bow. And I'm sure some of you are kind of wondering, well, how are we going to learn how to hold a bow if we don't have a bow at home to practice with? Well, this is when your handy dandy pencil is going to come into play. We're actually going to be practicing the bow grip on a pencil. And believe it or not, it's pretty common for violin teachers to teach students how to hold um, a pencil like a bow grip before holding a bow. And that's because the pencil is much smaller and much lighter and easier, easier to manage. So it's actually a pretty good practice technique for us to be trying it on a pencil first before an actual bow, okay? So the first thing you need to know before you practice your bow hold is that the bow, it goes in the violinist's right hand. 
And this is true even if you're a lefty. Um, the, I like to think of the violin as being an ambidextrous activity. Do you know what ambidextrous means? It pretty much means that both hands are equally important. So, um, for instance, when you play the violin, your violin itself is held on the left side. So your left hand is managing the fingerboard and playing all the different notes. Your right hand is managing the bow. So, you know, you can't um, say that one is more important than the other. The left hand action and the right hand action is both equally important. So, you know, for that reason, all students learn to play with the bow in the right hand and the violin in the left hand. There's no advantage to switching. So today, even if you're a lefty, you're going to practice holding the bow or the pencil bow in the right hand. So let's just make sure we know which one's our right hand and go ahead and raise your right hand and give me a nice good aloha. Aloha students. Very nice. Are you holding up your right hand? <clears throat> now uh, the best way that I can teach students how to hold the bow an easy and memorable way is to um, tell students that the shape of the bow hold is kind of like the shape of a shadow puppet bunny rabbit. Do you know what a shadow puppet is? Sort of like when you make the, the shape of an animal uh, with your hand and you um, shine the light on it and makes the animal into the shape of a shadow on the floor or the wall. It's kind of fun if you ever want to try it. But anyways, go ahead and take your right hand and shape your right hand like a bunny. Imagine that your thumb is like the bunny rabbit's lower teeth and the lower jaw. And the middle and ring finger, the nails, drape over the thumb a little. And imagine that the, those nails there are like the bunny rabbit's big, long buck teeth coming down over the chin like this. And then of course that makes the pointer and the pinky like the bunny rabbit ears. Do you have it? Now, for some of you, you may have had a teacher in the past that taught you about the quiet coyote. Now this bunny rabbit shape is very similar to the quiet coyote, but there is a little bit of a difference. A coyote or a dog shadow puppet is going to have a long nose like this, but not a bunny rabbit. Bunny rabbits have cute short faces, so you want to make your hand, your fingers into a little more of a round shape like this. And a great way to test out to see if you have the right shape is to hold your hand up to your eye like this and look through your hand like a telescope. And if you can see right through, then you know you're on track to having the right shape with your hand. Okay? Did you try it? How does it look? Okay, shake it out. Wiggle your fingers and relax them as much as you can. Now, with your left hand, what I'd like for you to do is lift up your pencil. You're going to lift up the pencil by the tip with your left hand like this so that your eraser points over to your right. Okay? So you're holding it on a horizontal line. And with your right hand, try making that bunny rabbit one more time. Take your thumb, put your thumb behind your middle and ring fingers so that the bunny rabbit has two teeth coming over the chin. And then you have your pointer and your pinky fingers as the ears. And let's make our bunny rabbit do a little hopping. I imagine a little bunny rabbit hopping out into the sunshine and just, um, you know, getting a bit of fresh air and exercise. And then um, after all this hopping, the bunny rabbit starts to get a bit hungry. And do you know what bunny rabbits like to eat? Bunny rabbits love carrots. So we're going to pretend that our pencil is a carrot. You're going to line up your bunny rabbit's lower teeth, the thumb the tip of your thumb on the underside of the pencil like this. You'll almost balance your pencil right there. And then you're gonna bring your middle and your ring finger up and over the stick so that the bunny rabbit, it looks like the bunny rabbit is eating the carrot. Can you see? Yeah. Now the bunny rabbit's eating and eating and eating and eating until it's very full. And once the bunny rabbit is full, it begins to get tired. So it's time for the bunny rabbit to take a bit of a nap. Take the pointer finger ear and lean it up against the stick of the pencil. And then it looks like your bunny rabbit, you see, 
and leaning over for a nap. And now your pinky finger is still sticking straight up like mine, isn't it? Well, what happens with the pinky is as your bunny rabbit drifts off to sleep, the pinky finger curves and touches the top of the stick just slightly like this. And then once you've got it, you can turn your pencil to a uh, vertical line like this and it looks just like a bow hold. Good work. So I like to call this the bunny rabbit bow grip. And when you have a nice bow grip like this, you can practice an exercise to help strengthen your fingers that I like to call stir the soup. So take your bunny rabbit bow hold and your pencil and make nice large circular shapes like this. We're imagining that there's a long wooden spoon sticking out from the bottom of your eraser here and that it's swirling the soup around. Hey, let's pretend like we're making a soup for our nice bunny rabbit, Sh shouldn't we? And I think that bunny rabbits really like um, carrots, so let's put some carrots in our soup. And give your soup a turn, swirl those carrots around. Good. Another, another type of food that I think maybe your bunny rabbit would like is celery. So let's put some celeries in the pot too. Give it a swirl. Nice job. How about cabbage? Oh, your bunny will love a cabbage. Let's put cabbage in there. Are there any types of food that you can think of that a bunny might like to put in the soup? Let's put it in. Give it a turn. Really nice. Good. All right, take your pencil back to the horizontal, grab onto the pencil with your left hand, and wiggle out your fingers. Just get them really relaxed. Now students, it's very common for this to be very tiring for your hand at first. So if your hand feels a little bit achy or sore after holding it in this position for a long time, you're not alone. This is something very common. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that the reason why uh, kids' hands get so tired sometimes is because you're really making this unusual shape with your hands and you're holding on to a pencil in this unusual way that you've never held it before. What you're doing is really exercising new muscles. So you can't expect a new exercise to be totally easy at first. It takes some practice. So let's shake out those fingers and let's practice it one more time. Okay, start off with your bunny rabbit first. Bring your thumb behind your middle and ring fingers, pointer and pinky fingers pointing up, just like ears. And then the first thing the bunny rabbit does is eat the carrot. So take your thumb, line your thumb up under the stick, and bring your middle and ring fingers up and over the stick like this. And then the bunny rabbit is chomping on the carrot. Very cute bunny rabbit, I think. Okay, do you remember what happens after the bunny rabbit's finished eating? It's nap time. So take your pointer finger and lean it out over the pencil like this. So the bunny rabbit is like laying down for a nap. And then as the bunny rabbit drifts into a slumber, the pinky finger rests top of the stick like this. And once you have it, turn your bow to the vertical and stir your soup. Good job doing that again. Now, there's one more exercise that we can do besides stirring the soup. So stirring the soup is the first bow exercise, but the next bow exercise I like to call the elevator. And I love this bow exercise the most because it really imitates the feeling of pulling a, a bow across a violin. And so here's what you do. You pretend like your pencil is the elevator car where all the people are and you're bringing the people up and down the elevator and the goal is to make sure that they have a safe ride and they don't get sick in the elevator. So not too fast, not too slow, and certainly not wobbling around too much, right? So let's start with by bringing our elevator down. So slowly go down the elevator and go down as far as you can and then glide up and see how I'm keeping the bow nice and straight, or I should say the bow pencil, right? And then all the way up like this, and then down. And you can really smooth glide up and down a few times like this. Up once more, and down once more. 
Good. Now bring your bow back to the horizontal and take your pencil with your left hand and wiggle out your fingers. Relax them. Very nice. Now students, this is something that you could even practice on your own without the video if you want. All you need is a nice long pencil and you just practice your bunny rabbit bow hold shape practice putting it on the pencil, and then you can do exercises like stir the soup and the elevator. These are great ways to practice getting the correct bow technique. Well, students, that concludes our video lesson for today. And as always, it's wonderful to see you. I'm looking forward to seeing you next time already. Um, now that we're finished, a good idea is to go to the assignment and find our quiz for today. And just to test out your knowledge and see what you can remember from this video. Anyway, students, I hope you're healthy and well, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great week.